And um, there's a little pattern in the next few talks. See if you can spot it. <laughs> Is it putting my password? Oh, no, it's not putting my password up. There we go. So it can work? Yes. Awesome. All right, thanks everyone um, for coming and listening to me in the siesta session, I like to think of it, after lunch. You know, everyone wants a nap. Um, so yeah, so hopefully this will be exciting enough for you. So I'm gonna talk about monitoring all the things on your Linux system with the Elastic Stack. Um, that, I realized that when I wrote the ab abstract for this talk, um, I was a little bit ambitious on what I decided I thought I might cover in this talk. Um, so the hype factor was a little bit high. I'm sorry if you're gonna come here and be very disappointed with what I'm gonna talk about. But I'll try and summarize some of the stuff which I was hoping to talk about. Maybe less demos and that kind of stuff. I don't really wanna taint the demo gods today. I'm not feeling lucky. So what I'm actually going to talk about today, um, I'll just give a little bit of an introduction to the Elastic Stack. Um, just in case um, you don't know what it is. Um, I'll talk about metric beat. Um, all those numbers don't line up. Um, I'll talk about why you would use Elasticsearch, one of the components of the Elastic Stack for metrics, which is something we, um, I guess, like a lot of people don't think of us for. And I'll, I'll hopefully like maybe tell you a couple of things we've built which might convince you otherwise. I'll do a quick walkthrough of metric beat. Um, and then we'll talk about some expanding the reach of your Elastic Stack deployment. Um, if that's a little bit of a mystery, we'll see. All right, so who here has heard of Elk or the Elastic Stack, and Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, all these tools? Everyone's heard of Beats? A couple of people maybe? Okay, well, I'll just do a quick run through. So we have a stack of products which all kind of work together. That's why we call it a stack. So we have a visualization tool, so it's just a web-based UI called Kibana essentially just written in Node. Um, it's just a way of like essentially grabbing data out of Elasticsearch and visualizing it. Um, so making pretty charts and graphs and that kind of stuff. Elasticsearch is the data store. Um, it's a search engine. It's JSON based, REST interface, all that kind of nice stuff which um, a lot of people like to play with nowadays. Um, so yep, it's a way of just basically sticking your data in there. And the way you access that data is you search it. You search it and you aggregate it and do all that kind of stuff. Beats, um, beats are basically lightweight shippers. They're a way to get some kind of data off a system and send it to Elasticsearch. That's pretty much their whole purpose. They basically take, they listen on um, some socket or read some log file or something like that and they basically take it and they stick it into Elasticsearch for you. And Logstash is kind of like a Swiss Army knife ETL tool. It just basically can take a lot of different sources, many of the same ones which uh, Beats can do. It can listen for Beats input, and it can basically manipulate, massage, um, filter, do all these kind of like cool stuff with your data before it sticks it somewhere else. And that might be Kafka or Elasticsearch or all kinds of things. And um, even though it's called Logstash, it's not necessarily uh, for logs. It can also do other types of data. In this talk, I'll just be focusing on the Kibana, Elasticsearch, and Beats part of the stack. I won't really talk about Logstash. So I'm not going to talk about a Elk stack so much, if you've heard that phrase. Maybe I'll talk about a Keb stack or a Beck stack. I don't know. Whatever you like. Ekba. I don't know. Whatever you feel like, you put them in whatever order you want. Cool. So I'll talk about metric beat. Metric beat is what I'm going to focus this talk about, because it is essentially the thing which allows us to monitor all the things on our Linux um, system. Metric beat is just one of many beats we have. These beats have all different purposes. They're designed basically in a way to do one thing. That's kind of a bit of a lie. Metric beat does a couple of things. But basically, it's um, a way of reading local data sources on your Linux system. So metric beat kind of used to be come from this tool called top beat. And top beat was essentially a way of doing top output into Elasticsearch. So if you think of the top tool, where every second, two seconds, it basically shows you all that system information. That's what metric beat can do. It can basically take all that system information. So it goes and reads the sys, the proc, all those different file systems um, and that kind of stuff, grabs all that data, summarizes it, displays it all nice and neatly, and sticks it in Elasticsearch for you. But it can do a lot of other things as well. It can listen to various services where you might be running on your Linux systems. So for example, you might have Docker running, and Docker has a socket. Um, so metric beat can go and interrogate that socket, grab information about Docker, and stick that in Elasticsearch for you. And it can do this with various services running on um, your system. So it can do a whole bunch, it can gather not only your system metrics, like your CPU, um, IO, that kind of stuff, it can also gather your, basically your, um, your, all those other services you're running and all the information they have. 
And I'll show you some examples of that um, a bit later when we get towards the end of the talk. You deploy it once on your server, and it listens to all these different services. You don't need to deploy all these different binaries. Just one, you just basically configure figure it in this modular way. You decide, pick and choose what you want to monitor, and it just grabs it all, sucks it all up, and sticks it into Elasticsearch for you. And it's Docker ready, um, because that's the hot keyword nowadays. So um, I will show you just basically my demos are all in Docker. Um, just makes it nice and easy. Um, Docker ready in the sense that it has a Docker um, image you can use. We supply one for you, um, which you can use, or you can just basically you know, build it into your own um, Docker image and maybe do what people to tell you not to do and run maybe two binaries in your Docker containers or something like that. Ooh, I said it. Um, OK, so what can Metri Beat monitor? It can monitor a lot of things. So it can monitor all these different services basically by interrogating the things these services normally do on your system by default in their out-of-the-box installation. So things like Apache, it can go and read some of the logs and the sockets and maybe the server status um, details, that kind of thing. Um, Postgres, those things, they have some like slow logs and error logs which they stick onto your system. Um, some of these other things basically have a socket, as I said, so they just basically interrogate that system socket and get all the useful stats out of that. What we're going to talk about in this talk just as a focus, is the system um, module of Metric Beat, which is basically that tool which does the top output. Um, but this is not a complete list. There is a lot more there. If I'd stuck them all on that slide, you wouldn't be able to read it. Um, so yes, so go to the website, and you'll be able to see all the different things it can do. But it can do any of these. And you can pick and choose them. You can have all of them, some of them. Whatever your system is running, you can basically monitor that kind of stuff on there. Cool. So the Metric Beat system module, in particular, so it measures the CPU usage statistics, does it by per core, system load, all that kind of stuff, does all your file system usage, you can filter your file systems, so the ones which are you know, kind of like not useless to you, you don't have to listen to those or watch that metrics, does all your disk IOs, it can break it down per process, um, all that kind of goodness, memory usage, network IO, basically everything you pre pretty much want to monitor with like tools like top, um, all of the sysstat tools and all those kind of things. It basically grabs all those metrics, those tools um, grab, and can stick it into Elasticsearch for you and basically um, allow you to visualize it in Kibana. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty nifty little metric uh, module there, which does all those kind of things. Now, oh, 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 really doesn't like that. OK, so, um, so the metric beat system module does all these things. And if you like saw all those, like summary of all those different, like, uh, pieces of information, you're probably thinking, that's a lot of numbers. It's not a lot of text. I always thought Elasticsearch was a search engine for text, you know, like it was logs and that kind of stuff, which is all like, you know, a lot of words and that kind of stuff, not really numbers. So can you use Elasticsearch for metrics? And a lot of, nowadays you see a lot of um, tools coming out which are basically dedicated sort of time series or metrics databases and that kind of thing. Um, so a lot of people ask this question all the time, and it's a valid question. Um, a lot has changed. Um, Elasticsearch, sure. Back in the day, it was a text search engine, but we've added a lot of goodness into Elasticsearch, which allows it to basically store met metrics very, very well and make it very, very efficient to both store them and search and aggregate and analyze those metrics. So on the storage side of things in Elasticsearch, and I'm just talking about Elasticsearch here, sort of deviating away from metric beat for a minute, Elasticsearch has some, a different sort of storage method of storing metrics. So when you store text, the way we like to refer to it is we store it as an inverted index. If you think about books, remember books? Um, in the back of the book, remember in the back of the book there was a thing called an index, and it'd have a word and have a number of pages which um, that word was on? That's kind of your inverted index. That's really, really essentially what it comes down to when you're trying to index text and store it and search on it. That really doesn't work for numbers. Imagine having a value and then having a bunch of documents which match that value or have that value in them. Um, that kind of doesn't really work. So what we're uh, basically using nowadays is this thing called BKD trees. Um, it's a really efficient sort of way of storing metrics, and it can store lots of metrics. It can store n-dimensional metrics. It can do all kinds of crazy stuff, and it stores in a very, very um, efficient, dense way on disk, and which is also very fast to search over. So that's a really nice feature, which has come in like basically V5, I think it landed in, of Elasticsearch. So it's in a very modern version of Elasticsearch. So if you're on a less than V5, I'd suggest upgrading. We also have some range data types. So for example, if you have a duration in your metrics, you can store that very efficiently nowadays. We actually have a dedicated range type. We have these, uh, like these values called half floats and scaled floats. So it's a way of like, um, I guess if you've got 
uh, float which goes over a large range of values is sort of a very way of using like essentially a smaller data type um, to store that with a multiplicative factor involved, which allows you to basically, instead of using a very large data type on disk, you can use a smaller data type and a little bit of extra space and you can store those numbers very efficiently. Sparse field storage, that often is the case with metrics. Some metrics have some values, some metrics don't have some values for various like uh, measurements. So we can store that very efficiently nowadays. Um, index sorting, so basically if you want to um, store your data in a particular order, timestamp, um, particular value of some particular metric or something like that, you can store it on disk in that structure so that when you go to search on it, it's very efficient to retrieve it um, based on that order. At the search side, we do a lot of caching. Um, when you're searching over metrics, you're probably filtering data. You're excluding a whole bunch of stuff, like you know, within this date range, um, where, the error value, where the error level is seven, that kind of stuff. That's all filtering your data. We cache those filters very aggressively in modern versions of Elasticsearch to make your search very fast. Um, and we do a lot of query rewriting. This basically means if you have a large amount of data and the way we store the data on disk, we can essentially know where that data is uh, located, essentially. So we can basically avoid searching where we wouldn't find any data um, for your particular query um, by just basically using some heuristics um, we have in Elasticsearch. And then finally, at the management layer of Elasticsearch, we have a bunch of APIs nowadays which really help with this large-scale retention and storage of data. Um, so basically, we have a rollover API which can kind of help you, um, I guess, in the long run, basically manage your retention policies for your data. Um, Basically, we have a shrink and split API. Um, one particular complaint a lot of people had in the early days was that when you decided on this factor we called sharding, um, you basically had to have it set in stone at index time and you couldn't really change it. It's kind of like still the case, but there are kind of some APIs now which can uh, allow you to sort of change that a little bit. And we have a re-index API. So if you want to do things like rollover, you need to clean up your um, data or do something to your data, maybe you need to cut computer field or something like that, you can basically do that as well. Cool. And of course, we have TSVB, which is a new feature, a new way of visualizing the data, which is in Kibana. Um, and this works really well for metric data. This is, oh, it doesn't really come out very really well, that screenshot there. My resolution is terrible. Um, this is basically the air quality measurements in Canberra over some period, I think last week or something, when I generated this screenshot. So basically, some air quality station metrics. Um, so basically, that's the AQI values. Essentially, the air quality is very good in Canberra. So you should live in Canberra. Um, just uh, sort of advertising there. Um, all right, cool. So we've talked about basically, I guess, why you would use Elasticsearch to store metrics. So let's look at how you can do that with MetricBeat, Elasticsearch, and Kibana. And this is a very, very quick walkthrough. I'm not gonna tame the demo gods with this kind of like um, effort here. I'm just gonna show you some examples and walk you through it. And you can get basically go and do it on your laptop after this talk if you like. It'll take you less than a minute to do. So how do we do it? First, we need Elasticsearch running. So we're going to Dockerize it, start it up in Docker. There we go. That's all we need to do. We just basically start a named container called Elasticsearch, which is listening on a couple of ports. We start Kibana. We link that Kibana container to the Elasticsearch container so that Kibana um, process can go and interrogate that Elasticsearch container on the specific ports we listed there. And then we basically just start up MetricBeat. This is a little bit more complicated when we're doing it in Docker. If you were running it like in the same system, you weren't running it containerized, you wouldn't need all this other guff here. Because we're running it containerized, we sort of need to expose the host uh, file system, so the proc and sys file system, we need to expose them within the metric beat container. So we basically just got a bunch of options there to expose those details so that we're not measuring the container stuff, we're measuring the host system stuff. Um, so that's basically um, what we can do there. And um, we just specify a special parameter there called setup. The cool thing about that parameter I'll just make a note of is that it will basically go to Kibana and set up a whole bunch of dashboards for pretty much everything uh, MetricBeat can monitor. So it sets up dashboards for Apache, Docker, the system module, all of the modules which MetricBeat has, it basically sets up dashboards in Kibana for you. So you can start visualizing your data immediately um, in a pretty dashboard. Um, and that's kind of what it looks like. And again, my screenshots look terrible, um, but it will look much better on your screen, um, I would hope. If your screen looks like that, you either need your eyes checked or you need a new monitor. Um, so one of those two things is probably likely. But basically, that's the system uh, module there um, for you. So basically, it just shows you all the pretty graphs. This is done mostly out of TSVB, Time Series Visual Builder, um, which that is uh, sh uh, short for. So basically, you can see all these metrics in lovely charts and graphs. We can zoom in on them, click on them, all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you had several metric beat uh, 
processes monitoring several different hosts, you'd see all that data aggregated there and you could filter it by host and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, so lovely, lovely dashboards we can uh, build with metric people. So where do you go from here? Well, we were just looking at one system there. Um, but basically, you put metric beat on all your systems. You're going to now monitor all your systems with metric beat. So you stick metric beat on all your servers. You go and stick Elasticsearch and Kibana on a single server somewhere, or like on two separate servers. So you just set up your Elasticsearch cluster, your Kibana host on all of your systems which you're running, all your database servers and all those kind of things. You'd basically install metric beat, um, either containerized or just on, you know, just there on the on the system. You'd configure metric beat depending on what modules um, is basically it's going to be used. If it's a, a database server, just configure the MySQL or Postgres module or whatever it is. If it's a Docker host, configure the Docker module. Whatever you need, you probably configure the system module all the time, because why not? That's all very useful metrics if you're trying to do troubleshooting. Um, configure all of them to point to that single Elasticsearch cluster. You'd run the metric beat command with the setup parameter we just had um, back there. Where was it? Uh, we're just with the setup command. Um, you'd run that once just to set up those dashboards. We only need to import them once um, in Elasticsearch. Once we do that, we can then basically have all those pretty dashboards and all of those systems starting to send their data into Elasticsearch, and we can start viewing those pretty charts and graphs and analyzing it and looking at it. So very, very easy. But we can go even further, because as I said, there was a whole bunch of different beats out there. Metric beat is just one beat, and it just basically does these system things. It does various logs and that kind of stuff and various system services there. But there are basically a whole bunch of other um, beats out there. So there's like packet beat, which can monitor like your flows and your TCP, DNS, various layer seven protocols that can basically dissect them and basically put them into Elasticsearch. Um, file beat for your logs. Um, and then Heartbeat, which is basically, I guess, a system uptime kind of tool. Um, it can interrogate like a HTTP endpoint, um, or it can just basically send ping packets and basically ping that kind of stuff into your Elasticsearch cluster. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch here. And just what Fraser talked about earlier, we also have Audit Beat now, which can basically do your Audit Beat logs into um, Elasticsearch. And all of these, just like Metric Beat, all come with pre-made dashboards for you. So you basically just have to install them, run that setup command, away you go pretty dashboards in Elasticsearch already going for you for, to measure all this data and look at it. So we can do the full stack monitoring <laughs> with uh, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and all of these beats together. And we have an example um, which you can run. Um, when you start this up, it might take, I don't know, depending on my laptop, it takes about a couple of minutes or something like that. But it basically will start up and monitor all of this stuff for you. So it starts up an Elasticsearch Kibana container, starts up metric beat. It'll monitor the system stats, and it measures your Docker stats as well. It sets up file beat monitoring. So it also starts up Apache, it starts up Nginx, it starts up MySQL, and basically it starts tracking all the logs of all those, all those different containers and sticks them into Elasticsearch as well as part of the demo, just to show you how you can do it with file beat. And it grabs the system logs as well, because why not? We also can do packet beat, so all of the traffic on the interface, on that server you start this up on, it will monitor all that stuff. It'll monitor all your DNS traffic, it'll monitor your HTTP traffic, all the MySQL stuff, and all the TCP flows. So um, source, destination, ports, and addresses, and all that kind of information coming in and out of that server. And finally, it does heartbeat monitoring. So basically, it, does, it sends some pings out to some, um, to some Google hosts, I think, by default, because why not? Google can take it. Um, Apache and Nginx, it basically monitors server status, which, you know, out of the box, Basically, everyone turns on. Also monitors MySQL, um, does a health check against Kibana or Elasticsearch, because they're just basically web interfaces. Um, so it basically does all of this monitoring for you um, in a bunch of containers on your little server for you um, as an example. And so basically, you can see that you can pretty much monitor just about everything you kind of need um, with Elasticsearch, um, and a couple of beats, um, and a little bit of like know-how. So, you can go and see what's possible um, at that address there, which is just GitHub. Go to the Elastic um, organization in GitHub. Go to the examples repo. And in there, in the miscellaneous, we've buried it away somewhere. You'll have to, that'll be the, that'll be the little test for you if you can find it first. Um, if you go into the miscellaneous, Docker, full example, you'll basically have a Docker Compose um, file there, which you can run, which will bring up this full stack example. All of these things monitored for you, all for Elasticsearch. 
Um, that's pretty much the end of my talk, actually. So um, I was actually went a bit fast, but that's pretty good. Um, so there's some references of some of the stuff I talked about earlier. So um, basically, that's just some references about some of those changes we've made in Elasticsearch. So if you've used Elasticsearch in the past for logging, and you've looked at it in the past for metrics, and you thought, mm, maybe I'll go to something else, or I don't really feel like it's going to do a really good job, have a go at it. Have a go with v5 or v6 is our current version. Have a go with it v6. Um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised about the way it can work, how fast it can do, and all these nice little features we've added into it. Um, and definitely go and have a try of that full stack example. Um, it's pretty damn cool um, to see all this stuff start being monitored um, and all in one central UI um, and all centrally managed and searchable and aggregatable. So it's pretty cool. Um, contact me. We love our community. Go there. Find out about us. Come and talk to me afterwards, and I can show you some demos. Um, I didn't have time uh, today, and I didn't want to tempt the demo gods. So yeah, come and find me. We can talk about it more. Um, that's the end of my talk. Thank you. So we actually have a couple of minutes for just questions, if anyone has some. Oh, two. Um, I'd be interested to understand if there'd be a way to aggregate metrics as they get older. Have you got any facility to do that? So, you know, f five months from now, I'm not going to care what the server did yesterday, but today I, I care. Yeah, so I guess like, um, I don't know. So I guess I'm going to rant a little bit about my personal thing. Is that sure, I can see the, I can see the need to roll up metrics um, for storage, but I reckon storage is probably the cheapest thing out there. And to be honest, once you roll up those metrics, you, it becomes lossy. You've lost some information there. And you can't do things like if you have your roll-ups of metrics, like you've taken an average over a month, and then you want to take the average of a couple of months, which are really old, you can't do that. An average of an average doesn't work. So rolling up metrics, sure, we don't have to offer a solution out of the box. You can certainly do it with things like Logstash and that kind of stuff. You can configure it to basically do some aggregations and then index those aggregations back into Elasticsearch and then delete the original data. But I don't know. I'd really worry about it. Um, so yeah. And the other thing is metrics sort of lose their appeal or like their value very quickly. So you generally don't need to store lots of metrics. What we'd hope is that with these changes um, we've made at the lower end with Elasticsearch, there's probably, hopefully, the storage requirements are much less for metrics to the point where even if you have a large volume of metrics, um, you can actually store them very efficiently. Hi, great talk. Um, one quick question. Is it possible to feed the, all these things that are being monitored into an alerting system? Uh, yeah, so there is a couple of open source alerting systems um, built on top of the Elastic stack. So Elastic Alert, Elastic Alert, I can't pronounce it right, but by Yelp, they've written a, like essentially a monitoring solution which you, can, uh, which you can run on top of Elasticsearch which basically does essentially cron-like monitoring pulls the information, does an aggregation in Elasticsearch, you know, like what is the average of some latency over a certain period of time? If it's too high, too low, if the percentile is this, send me an alert, you know, send it off to PagerDuty, send it off to somewhere, that kind of stuff. So, yep. Cool. We also have an uh, offering, but I, don't, I won't talk about that at a, at a conference like this, <laughs> which can One do more it. Question. Kind of cool that uh, you got all the stuff to work out of the box. Uh, can you define anywhere a complex working example? of all these things, because it's, uh, re reading the documentation, there's uh, plenty of stuff on, uh, for instance, configuring Logstash, but a, an ex a working example, I was wasted hours trying to actually cobble different parts together, trying to get to do what I needed to. So this is a very contrived example, because no one runs a stack like this anymore. You know, back in the day, we used to run stacks like this, where we'd run a, like a, what is it like, what do we call the stack? I forget what, Ant LAMP stack or whatever it is. Nobody does that anymore. But all of these tools, you can basically just split out those parts and stick them on your various services. The cool thing about Metric Beat nowadays is it's very modular. It's very easy to enable and disable these modules to monitor particular things. And because we have this out of the box dashboards for it, and basically the configuration is pretty much, it just uses the defaults of whatever Red Hat or Debian install on their, on their, for their various services. It's pretty much minimal configuration needed nowadays. So pretty much it should just work out of the box um, in most cases. Okay, uh, thank you very much to Josh. Um, yeah.